Um, I want to start right away with a big question. What initially drew you to the field of neurosurgery? Uh, hello, thank you for the invitation. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here um, to do this interview with you. Uh, it's my honor. Uh, about your question, uh, I am very honest. My father was my inspiration. I was younger. He was no assumption. I remember saw my father in, in, in the work many times, uh, coming to my home later share the experience with, with my, my mother and just uh, listened that experience for me when I was younger was like a very, big, very big inspiration. So my father was honestly my, my really inspiration to, to choose a neurosurgery lifestyle. So from a young age, you knew you want to be a neurosurgeon. Uh, was your father also your mentor? Uh, you know, so, very nice question. My father, my father uh, died before I came into a uh, neurosurgeon. He he died very very young, and he never see me like a neurosurgeon. So, but it, you know, was uh, I'm still doing my my very big inspiration because in some part of my soul I feel he's working me all the time. You know. The mm -hmm. inspiration of my father uh, showed me the the way and made me strong in this, uh, like I said before, socially lifestyle. I see. Yeah. He was like a big figure in your life. and Yeah, um, totally, totally. Yeah. Of course, yes. But he was a very passionate man. And he, I remember the love he he, he, he had for, for the patients and the way. Like he, he did the neurosurgery. The, he was very humble, um, very kind with the people. And that was like a landmark in my life uh, to follow that, uh, you know, examples for the life. Mm -hmm. So I tried to, I tried to follow the step of my father in, in many ways, you know. Of course, the time has changed. The neurosurgery changed all the time. The new the new challenge about the techniques or the new, the develop of the, you know, the neurosurgery itself mm -hmm. is one thing, but the, the values, I mean, how can we, we be more kind, more uh, humble, more uh, accurate with the patients, that's values uh, I, I felt very, very deep in my, in my soul. That's coming, that's values coming from my father. I'm sure. The, um, unfortunately, your father was not with you to mentor you or probably to see to see you as a neurosurgeon. And if you can um, describe a particular mentor that played an important role in your career, the mentorship, in my in my opinion, uh, is crucial to the develop. Um, to grow up in this, in this, like I say, lifestyle, like a neurosurgery style, uh, in this way, I had, and I have today many examples, but, um, uh, the mentorship for me is one big condition to be better in the life. The mentorship is very important because the mentorship show you, must show you the, the way, the light in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the end of the tunnel. In the end of the of the way, so sometimes the mentorship uh, is not just inspiration; is 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 like example in their life. The way, like one mentorship, uh, talk to you, show you the good and the bad things. That is very important because is uh, in some point without inspiration for this career is so difficult to to find the the light. At the end of the tunnel, you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. I have many people. I I have admiration for many today. Many people, some of them uh, open many many uh, doors in my life, in my career, around the world. I have the privilege to to know in the past, uh, Doctor Evandro Oliveira, 
by both in the actuality, he opened the way to to start my uh, my career, like an association in a hospital where I I do all my, my yeah. formation. His uh, his neurosurgeon is Argentina guy. Is, the name is uh, Doctor Lambre. Um, I had the privilege to know one guy who is my friend today, Doctor Pablo Rubino. He's one of mm -hmm. the best neurosurgeons in the world. Yeah, um, he is. Yes, I know. Uh, everybody knows. Um, with the with the years, I had the, the chance to to be in the Roto lab. I never, I never saw, I, I never met Doctor uh, Doctor Roto. I was I was there for many many months. I remember uh, see the uh, the paint, you know, the the picture, mm -hmm. the photograph in the in the wall of of him. Um, he was a very big inspiration. Uh, the place was a very big inspiration. I had the opportunity to to see the work of many fellows there, many of mm -hmm. tremendous fellows, and all all of them was a big inspiration to to try to push to myself. Uh, with the pass of the time, I had the the the, the opportunity to 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 see and to meet uh, Dr. Franz Miranda, Juan Carlos. Mm -hmm. He opened more doors for my life. And with the times, I, 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 I had the, the privilege to meet to, to him uh, the first time in Pittsburgh. Uh, after that, uh, he opened uh, the doors uh, to accept me in Stanford. So with the time I create, almost for me, I know for him too, uh, uh, a friendship, you know, the mentorship and the friendship. I feel big admiration for all these people. So, like you ask me, the mentorship for me is crucial in the life of mm -hmm. one neurosurgeon when in your in your when you start, you know, because they are like a light in your life, and mm -hmm. you must follow, you must retake the best part of them, listen to him, and and. You need to try to to understand the philosophy, to see uh, the way and the effort they they put in uh, in in the careers. So I try to I try to fall. I respect too much the mentorship. So I respect too much these people. I try to reproduce and I try to translate this concept to sometimes for the new, the new mm -hmm. generation of neurosurgeon. Yes, I see that the uh, importance of mentorship cannot be overstated in these cases. So uh, actually the doctors are uh, evolving and training together and this mentorship is for you. I can see it's more on a deep connection level with all the great minds that you have the possibility to work. Um, um. And now that you're becoming a leader in neurosurgery, you are, I mean, you're not becoming, you already are. Um, what is your philosophies and principles that guide your approach, uh, the training for the next generation of neurosurgeons? It's a big question. Uh, my philosophy uh, to translate to the new generation is try to, to show the way with the, with the example, you know, with the old example to mm -hmm. show how much you be uh, a passionate, a passionate uh, to be kind, to be uh, the responsibility. Uh, we try to translate not just the technique, uh, even the mm -hmm. philosophy. Uh, the philosophy is, is, like I said before, it's a lifestyle. You know, it's a philosophy, mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle uh, to be humble. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, the new generation, the, 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 the new guys, I mean, the boys, uh, in the first time, they feel uh, they they feel very very strong, very uh, safety with with the you know with the first years because it's normal. It's normal. They yeah. are very proud, and uh, you know sometimes we we are very very proud, and we we lose some uh, you know uh, horizons. We lose the you know the final of the of the of the way. I mean, we need to we need to keep very very uh, concentrated in, in in some values like uh, 
humility, like uh, effort. Uh, so I try to I try to translate um, this concept to the to the young people. And the first concept is uh, be there, be all the time with them, where be the support, be in the back of the young people, try to talk with them, show you, uh, show to to them. Uh, you are the human being. You are not, uh, you know, like a steel man. I mean, you mm-hmm. have uh, debilities. You have uh, problems. Sometimes you need to to ask to and then others. Uh, you it's not necessary to to have all the uh, answers. Uh, I mean, in 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 the life, you you are like a human being, like I said before. So when you yes. show your vulnerability, but you show to to them. You are the support. You you will be all the time in the back uh, to protect to, to to them. Uh, I think you start to 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 um to win the respect of the mm-hmm. young people. You must be uh, you must be you must be uh, the example for this new generation, you know, that is my concern. I try to do that uh, all the time with with my my, for example, my residents, the residents mm-hmm. in my service. Argentina has a long reputation in neurosurgery, a, a long-standing reputation in the field of neurosurgery. So you're training the next generation of other people who will uh, um, who will contribute to the field. So that's a really this is really nice that they have a mentor as he, like you. Like I think they are very fortunate. Argentina um, is a is a had a, a good reputation, like you say, and we have uh, a lot of uh, young uh, neurosurgeons with talent. You know, this mm-hmm. is a, a a very nice country. We have a very nice country. We have very big mentors or. I mean, people who can to teach to us, and that is mandatory to to do the same. You know, the each generation mm-hmm. must be uh, translated to the others all the knowledge. I mean, Argentina is is uh, in Argentina. I think is tradition to do this, and I am proud about that. Yes, yes, it's a rich tradition <laughs> of neurosurgery in Argentina. Everyone is now. I mean, it's it, it is known for it. It's a uh, it's a world known fact. I also wanted to ask you regarding uh, Argentina. How do you perceive the development of future of neurosurgery in Argentina? You know, they, this question uh, mix uh, the real situation in the actuality of my country and the expectative mm-hmm. of us. Uh, I mean, today Argentina is is uh, we try to we are living a very difficult moment. We have mm-hmm. a lot of potential, but uh, in neurosurgery, uh, it's the same. I mean, we try to do the best uh, in this difficult moment. It's not just for Argentina, it's for the world. But mm-hmm. Argentina, with some uh, problems, uh, can be a little bit difficult to to grow up for the develop of the new strategies in, in, in neurosurgery, even uh to see in other people around the world for the new generation for the young people it's very expensive to to live to this country and visit another part of the world in order to see and learn from another people you know for the masters so yes yeah. that is uh, a, 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 it's not the it's not uh it's not a stop but in some point it's difficult to 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 reach that that possibility, so the young the, the young people need to do a very big effort. Uh, for mm-hmm. example, for to access, for, for example, Europe, United States, or whatever. But um, I have a, a strong feeling uh, about the future because the talent is in itself in this country. The, we have many mm-hmm. many people with talent. So I think if in the future Argentina. Uh, can be a little bit uh, better. I think I I I see the future like uh, promissory, like uh, uh, a, a very big hope about uh, the the develop of the neurosurgery in Argentina. That is my concept. I, I feel 
a very a very nice feeling for the future. So you're optimistic about this? Yes, of course. Yeah, that's very nice. I'm so <laughs> really hope everything is going to be better than it is now. Uh, we we are living in a really wonderful time when technology is now the AI is developing. So uh, it seems promising. Mm -hmm. um, now I would like to move to the operating room where all the magic happens. And in your opinion, what are the mandatory questions that every neurosurgeon should ask themselves before going to the OR? Difficult, uh, but very honest question. I mean, before to start, uh, um, when you are with, with your mind and your soul inside your body. So maybe you are ready to do this. You do all mm -hmm. to feel ready to do this. You put all your effort to be, be ready for this patient because the patient and the family put their life on, on, on your hands. You, you try to do your best. You push to yourself. And if you are not feel, if you are not ready or you don't feel very, very, uh, very, very, uh, how can I say? ready to do this, maybe you need to, you know, go to the side or maybe to, maybe you need to talk with another uh, colleague to do the, mm -hmm. this, this type of surgery or any, any surgery when you have some question to yourself. The first question in my, in my opinion is you do the best to, for, for, for this case, you, you, you feel strong, you feel safety with yourself. Uh, you, your soul is, is, you know, is ready to, to start this, uh, this surgery. It's, it's depend of you. If how much honest you are with yourself. Uh, if you are not ready, if you don't feel ready, you don't need to do this. You, you, mm -hmm. you don't need to do. Um, it's a very honest question for yourself. That is the first question. Uh, be ready for some unexpected uh, situation. How can you uh, fix some problems inside the surgery? How can you improve some moments in the surgery? You have uh, some people to help you. You think you, you only you can do this, or maybe uh, you, you open your mind and you can feel how much the people around you can, can help you. You, you must be open to, to, to that. You must be open to accept in some point, some complication can be very, very bad and you need help. And it's necessary, it's mandatory, it's very nice when you, when you say, please, can you help me? Because mm -hmm. in this moment, I need your help. So we are, we, we don't have all the answers. Uh, we are far, very far to, to feel that. Uh, I think. The honesty with yourself is mandatory to do, uh, I would not just search it, is to do your job, any job. That is my opinion about how, how can you start in the operation room your, your day with any case, with each case uh, in the session. Yeah, it's absolutely, uh. I guess a leadership trait to be a neurosurgeon, to be ready to work in it. Uh, in a team and uh, to trust your team, which it's it's not always the easiest way to say, oh, I don't think I'm yes. so good at this. It's a teamwork, the teamwork. Yeah. Um, and because the surgery is so complicated, of course, there are risks for the surgeries. And I was curious about your process, uh, your thought process on this. How do you personally calculate the risk of a surgery? It is somehow based on your previous experiences on your previous surgical cases, the cases that you've done yourself with your uh, hands, or it's based on the data that we have from surgical, uh, from scientific articles and data that we generally have in the textbooks. Oh, I understand. I, I think I am very honest with you. I think it's a mix. It's, it's mm -hmm. the mix between uh, your, your own experience and in your cases. Sometimes you have more cases of that pat this pathology or 
another pathology, but you, you don't have too much experience in, in some specific pathology. So mm -hmm. you must be, you must be check with the literature, with the papers or, you know, with, with the books. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a mix. It's between, uh, your own experience and the experience of the colleagues. Sometimes, uh, that is, uh, that is a, a rich concept because sometimes you can ask to the other colleagues, please tell me in this case, what, what is your opinion? Uh, you have many, many cases like this. Can you please, uh, very, you know, you must be very kind and humble. Can you give me your opinion about this? For example, which, which is the best approach, which is the key point to entry? Uh, you must be way to do this search. You must be do the search. Uh, in fast, I mean, in, in, the, in, in I mean, in the next days, uh, you need to to do another uh, studies, MRI, CT scan. You need to check with the others because with the if you have many opinions, if you have a good opinions of the honest folly, you you can be uh, ready. You can be more. It's it's like a a little, you know the. the metaphoric concept like a guns you have more guns uh oh yeah at, at the moment to when you when you do the search or even when you need to to take one decision in front of the patient i mean you say mm -hmm. okay you need to do the this search when you talk with the patient and the family and that decision is uh, maybe it's not nice if you come to, uh, if you talk about that and you say, okay, no, sorry, uh, now I don't want to do the surgery or because I changed my opinion. So, uh, your experience and the experience of the colleagues, you must be joined and take one big decision and experience. You must be keep that experience with yourself to be better and to to move forward in order to be better and better and better. It's not just for you, it's for the people who trust in you, for the family of that people, and that's people we call patient. Yeah. Uh, you also said a brilliant thought there. Uh, I was thinking about this a lot lately, that the safety entry point is an interpretation of the surgeon. During your, uh, this was during your presentation last year at International Rotor Society. So, mm -hmm. if you could elaborate on this, would be very nice. You know, uh, this this point uh, uh, is just my opinion. I am, like I say before, honestly, is my opinion. I explain a lot of time learning. Yes, we we can say learning about, uh, for example, brainstem because. I, I like very much the search in the prison. So the, the, the safe entry point is a very big concept in my opinion. It's a very nice concept, but we must be mm -hmm. adapt that concept in our mind in order to understand not just the anatomy in the brainstem. I mean, we need to understand the, the, the junction between the anatomy and the function of many drugs, the neurophysiology with the anatomy and how can one pathology in the brain stem or in the brain can change uh, that normal anatomy in order to create new uh, vision of the safety entry point, the safe mm -hmm. pathway? Because sometimes we think uh, when we, uh, we, we see some MRI, okay, this is the entry point because we remember the normal anatomy. Uh, but yeah. the anatomy and the function with the pathology all the times change. So sometimes we, we choose the, the most uh, faster uh, uh, pathway or the most close or most short uh, entry point. It's, sometimes it's not necessary to think in this way. You must be know the anatomy, the, the neurophysiology, but we, we need to be uh, very open mind in order to maybe to choose another entry point, maybe a little bit more far away, but in order to preserve the normal structures. Also to understand what is the, the, the damage you can do when you mm -hmm. entry in some safe entry point and the impact in the, not just in the neural anatomy, in the, in the physiology, in the, 
the repercussion of in in the uh, in the neurophysiology of the patient so we can we can uh, do damage uh, in in some areas without damage previously so mm -hmm. in my opinion the safe entry point must be uh, a big uh, analysis a big uh, analysis of if this this concept is just like a box in my opinion it's not like mm -hmm. a box it's not, it's, it's, it's can be elastic you must be uh, analyzing every every component when you take one decision that is my my opinion about the safe entry point for example in the brain oh, i see so it's about being flexible uh yes and knowing uh being confident yeah. what can do and what you can do um, yeah, that's true. Yes, in, in neurosurgery, everything uh, precision is key. I think so. Uh, when in complex cases, when you don't have like a forward, um, a forward path, and I mean it's a forward path, but it's not straightforward, uh, and the outcomes sometimes are uncertain. How do you manage these complex cases? First, first of all, uh, we try to don't damage more. You know, mm -hmm. we need to take decisions, and but sometimes the decision is stop. You know, the first, the first, the first rule is don't damage, don't damage the patient. Yes. If you are not sure and you need to stop the uh, the surgery and you need to change your your opinion, your point of view, and you know, refresh the you know the the, the case, you need to do that because sometimes. In order to you know to remove the pathology, in order to finish the surgery, uh, if you don't think very very clean in that moment, you can damage a lot of the patient. But uh, it's true we 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 do uh, a very uh, difficult specialty, very difficult surgeries. I mean any neurosurgeons um, part of. Our uh, work is to take decision, very difficult decision in one second, in one moment. But in my case, I think all the time thinking about in this class, you don't, you, you must need to don't damage the patient. Uh, you know, you must be preserved mm -hmm. the patient. If you, if you are not sure, please don't take that decision. Please stop wait think one minute and think how can you damage and how how big can be that impact in the future of the quality of life of this patient but i i am honest um your question is very intelligent uh, we we live with that question of all the time in in, in surgery but coming back to the previous question if you if you work in the team or if you work with the team it's necessary to take one minute and ask to the rest of the team what is the opinion what 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 is the opinion of the of the team uh, of your mm -hmm. colleagues if you if you have the privilege to work with a good team and good colleagues they can give you the opinion and that can be very very nice and safety in the deep for you for the patient because you can change you 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 know uh, you, your decision and that decision can be better for the patient. Yes, I don't think it's something shameful of uh, knowing when to stop because it's it's only going to be beneficial for you and the patient if you know when to stop properly. Um, I also have been fascinated by your cadaver dissections and you are renewed for the precision that you're doing those uh, dissections in the lab. Uh, you have been compared to Da Vinci, <laughs> and uh, also you received the Andrew Olsen Scientific Image Award at Stanford. Uh, can you share any techniques or methodologies or anything uh, that you use to uh, to ensure that you have such a remarkable precision? Uh, thank you for the comment. Um, you know, you know that uh, Da Vinci is, is just Da Vinci. I am not. Uh, <laughs> I am just a hard worker, and I try to follow the example, like I said before, of the the best uh, uh, this sector in the world, like the Roton uh, had. 
uh, I remember so many, many folders in the Rotron lab with the name of the most bigger, uh, you know, uh, artist people, no researchers in the world. I was, I was there and, and I had the, the privilege to, to show that. And that's folders with many, many uh, pictures. That was part of my inspiration. But about uh, the technique, I learned my first time in, in Brazil, my second time in Pittsburgh. I learned from my, my mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. I put all my effort in, in many, many hours. I mean, uh, I keep in my mind the concept, you must be put your best effort to, to, to move forward, to grab, to, to reach the excellence. Part of that concept born, uh, from my, my mentors, I confess, uh, the level of, of the, uh, of the, the level of the quality of the pictures. One of my mentors, Dr. Rubino, Paolo Rubino always was the first to see my, my work. So I remember in Rotron sent to him some pictures and say, oh, Pablo, please tell me how is your feedback about these pictures? Uh, uh, you, Max, you must be uh, better. You need to push to yourself. So how much? Oh. A lot. Oh, how much? A lot. So one day he say, uh, this, perf this is perfect. So, you know, sometimes the level, uh, you compare the level with the rest of the people, but the, the, the real level is inside you. How, how far you, you, you see, you can, you can go. How, how is the, 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 ex, the accent for yourself? Sometimes, uh, I remember in the lab, uh, doing the dissection, I remember be ready to take the picture and say, Max, this is the, the perfect moment to the picture. So, you know, I learned this concept when I feel this is the best moment for the picture, you must be, uh, take for example, some hours or some days come, come, come to the lab mm -hmm. tomorrow, but don't take the picture and tomorrow come see again the dissection and please be very, very careful with the details. If you find details, still doing the thing, clean, 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 and clean the, the, the specimen in order to reach mm -hmm. the, 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 the top of the excellence in the dissection. So I do that many, many times to push to myself. I think the, the really war or the really, uh, the really challenge is inside you, how far you, you want to go about the technique. I think is, uh, you know, it's funny, but one good chair and, and a lot of time and patience is necessary is, is, is the most important uh, when you are uh, doing the section and this, that's a funny concept, but honestly, you need to, uh, you need to, uh, to learn anatomy and even you must be do these sections to show some, uh, ideas in your mind mm -hmm. and trans translate to the, to the, to the specimen. You, you need to show to the people what is your concept about the anatomy or in some areas, for example, the pictures need to show what you see or what you try to show to the people. It's not just mm -hmm. the anatomy because the anatomy itself is nice. It's uh, for neurosurgery, it's anatomy with the application for the neurosurgeons. That is very, very nice to understand. It's not just uh, anatomy. It's uh, how you see the anatomy in one specimen uh, when you take the picture, you are, it's like a scene. You are uh, showing mm -hmm. to the people what is your vision about that area, about that approach, about that uh, particular uh, anatomy area. That is my, my really, it's not secret. It's my, it's, it was my experience. It's not, it's not mythic. It's not uh, something real. It's just effort, mm -hmm. time, 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 time in the lab. How much time did you take uh, to make that image that to receive the uh, Andrew Olsen Award? How much How time? many days? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, okay. Nice question. In Roton, I remember <laughs> uh, some days sleep inside the lab because uh, I remember Doc, 
cannot uh, come back to the apartment because they say, Max, you need to spend more and more time. I remember eat inside the lab and uh, stay a lot of time there um, in the night. They say, okay, don't come back to that because you lose time. Stay here, mm -hmm. sleep some hours and continue the dissection and work, work, work like a workaholic. Um, but uh, that place was a very, very big inspiration because in the history of that place, all the people, uh, many people, many fellows do that. Uh, about the time in, in each dissection, it depends how how far you can go, uh, how what is the quality of the dissection you 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 mm -hmm. want to show? So, but you can expand for one dissection, two days, three days, one month. It depend of you. Mm -hmm. It depend the the how little uh, you 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 can you can dissect. I mean, it's it's, it's not some uh, strict uh, technique about this or concept about this. It's it depend of you, but. I confess you, for some dissections, one week, all the days, uh, maybe one month for all the head. I don't know. It mm -hmm. was was very <laughs> was very uh, flexible, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a very hard work. Uh, uh, I'm just curious, what is the dissection that you are most proud of? You asked me about what is my favorite, my my favorite yes. dissection. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe uh, it know, might be complicated, but you, you're proud of yourself because you did it in a way that you didn't expect and it's just wonderful. Uh, you know, uh, I, I had the experience to do brainstain dissection. I was inspired in the work of uh, one colleague. He's from Turkey. Uh, the name is Kan Yagmurlu. Mm -hmm. I was inspired for him in when I was when I was in, in, in Brazil, after when I was in Pittsburgh, when I saw the, the, the work of him, I say this is impossible. You know what Max, this is impossible. Uh, so it was like a like a horizon, you know, like a line mm -hmm. for me and to, to improve to myself. So today I know him, I have a a, a very nice friendship with this guy and this master, I mean yeah brainstem uh is one of my favorite uh, dissection. Skull base uh, is one of my favorite dissections too. I think fiber dissection is in the future. Well, I mean, not in the future. It actually, it can be the, the the new frontier to understand the to understand you know the the brain uh, in general, brain brain stem, mm -hmm. whatever you want. For that, I had the privilege to to expend time in Istanbul um, and the privilege to to meet to Professor Touré. Oh. You know, when I when I saw the, the work in the lab of Professor Touré uh, and the Turkish people in Roton, mm -hmm. I shared a little time with some Turkish fellows. Doctor, I remember Dr. Abu Sargungo. Many fellows of Turkey, in my opinion, they are the best in the world in fiber section. Uh, for sure mm -hmm. and the inspiration of this master like a professor today when i was there uh he teach me he look my my work you know was like a pearl because some tips about the dissection the philosophy the the history of the fiber dissection you know was like a like a gift for for me and this was the last year and uh, in that moment, I recognized to myself, oh, Max, you you don't know nothing about fiber dissection when I, when I see this giant thing like a doctor today. Fiber dissection is one of my favorites, but I confess doing a uh, dissection of uh, skull base, open skull base, uh, mm -hmm. is, is, is one of my favorite uh, areas to dissect. I, 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 am, I am honest with you. I see. Um, now... I would like to ask you, what would be your advice for the young neurosurgeons who are pursuing um, a career in neurosurgery? My advice for the new, the new people, for example, the, yes. new, the, the new neurosurgeons. I, I work in, the, in, in one big hospital here in Argentina. We have many residents. 
I think, like I said before, the example, your example is uh, is like a mirror, you know, is where they look uh, how far they can they can go, how how is the limit for for them. Mm -hmm. So if you are a bad example, if you don't put your best effort, if you are not kind, not humble, if you don't be there when they need you, you know, that's it's a bad example for them and you cannot will nothing for that young people. Uh, in my opinion, in this life, I receive uh, many, many gifts for this master, like I said before. So mm -hmm. it's in, in, my, in my mind, it's mandatory the contribution to the new generation, like some people contribute uh, with me uh, in the past. So I try to, I try to be all, all day in the hospital. I try to, to, to talk. I try to, to be in the back, to be the support, to protect. Uh, I mean, not, I mean, the concept is it's not protect with the body, it's protect with the mind, mm -hmm. it's protect with the, with talking with them. Uh, talking where in, in some moment when the young people say, okay, I cannot improve or, or I feel fear. Okay. We can talk. We can, you, you can be like, uh, you know, like, uh, like a calm, uh, in order to, to give to them, uh, safety, security, you know, that is my concept. That is, it's, it's a little thing you can do for them. Of course, if the people deserve that, the young people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, today we are living a new generation, but I think the new generation deserve uh, this type of attitude for the old people to translate because it's very nice and we need to be proud if the, 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 the new generation in the future be better of you. Yeah. I mean, if mm -hmm. you are good now, I, I, my, my wish is in the future, these, these guys can be better of, of yourself, you know, because that is a very, is, is, uh, that is, is like a gift in the life because make a sense when you, in the future, when I will be, I don't know, older, more older, so the young people and they say, okay, this guy teach to us uh, something, something good. You know, that's a really gift, uh, like, a, like, a, no master, like a teacher. It's not teacher because you, you teach to do some stitch or some uh, approach is teaching um, a little thing in the life. This is my, this is my concern about how can you work and help to the young people in the future. Well, the best thing is to do is to be an example for them, just to show them. Um, we're about to run out of time. And as a last question, on it's more on a personal level. So uh, what lessons have you learned from your experience as a neurosurgeon that you believe are universally valuable, uh, valuable for leading a meaningful life? Uh, to be humble. To be humble. One of all the most important is to be found uh, and the, the humility uh, to know you are not, uh, you are not like a steel man. Uh, you are vulnerable, you feel mm -hmm. fears, but all the time be ready to fight with your fears and try to put in front of you the the, the idea you need to improve and be strong and be honest because that qualities must be used for your patient. So the humility to know which, where is your limit when you, mm -hmm. when you need to, to say to yourself, I don't know this. I need to, I need to ask or I need help when you feel coming down. Um, take somebody to, to support you and say, I feel, I feel fear in this moment because we are human beings. I try to apply every day in my life to be humble and, and to do mm -hmm. something good, uh, to put all your effort for that. 
for me to be not just a neurosurgeon, to be a doctor is a gift because all the doctors in the world do the best for the patients, for the people. And when they, when you see your patients uh, and they trust in you, that is it's incredible because they put their life in your hands and it's a big responsibility. So sometimes the life show you some problems when you compare with the real problems and the, the real responsibility. When some people have some disease, and you know, they, they are very, very lost in the way because they don't have what, what how can will be the future for them. And they trust in you. Oh, that is a gift. That's a gift. You must be ready for that. So that's attitude show you how much humble you must be and to put the focus in the real problem you know you know in the in the in the material things on the the little things of the life or fight for for nothing the neurosocial teach me to to put my 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 foot in in the in the floor you know to mm -hmm. to try to to see much more to the first tree in the in the wood. Uh, I mean, to, to see more deep what is the most important in the life. Help to the others, be kind, stay stay there to help and put your life at the service of the, the people. That's what, that is what we choose to be in, in this life. That is what Negotiation teach me in uh, I'm 52 years old. Thank you so much for this inspirational talk. It was uh, a, a really honor for me to have you here and to share your knowledge and experience and expertise. It's, it's, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much.